Sota Daf Vav Amud Aleph, the Noble and the Evident, Edim Bimdina Tayam. We get into a lot of difficulty often because of imprecision in the way we speak. We say things like it's a known fact. What does that mean? How, who knows? How well known a fact is it? How many people know that it's a fact? Is it important how many people know that it's a fact? Just that imprecision. And we, we see how in Halakha we go to such efforts to be very precise. The whole Pasha of Soita deals with a situation that is unknowable. The reason that the husband is in the state of, of jealousy and he can't figure out what's happened in this, and we have to resort to this miraculous process of the Soita is because there's no other way to find out. If there are other ways to find out, then the whole Soita process doesn't really work, as we'll see today and as we go through the, through the Masechta. But in analyzing and understanding the Soita process, we get a much better idea of the differences between that which is unknowable, and we discussed the other day that there's a body of, of fact which is unknowable. The Rebbe Nishim knows, El Yohanovi knows, but we don't know, and Halakha doesn't deal with that body of facts. And then there's the body of facts that are knowable, but we don't know them yet. They haven't yet been discovered. That's another body of fact. And then there are the ones which have been discovered already, which are, which are known and evident. And we're looking at the, the difference between that which is evident, that which is known, and that which is knowable. Let's have a look at it in the, in the sugya. The Mishnah says on Dafov, Ve'elo asurut, asurot melechol bitruma. Let's just, be, before that, look at the psukim. So the, the posuk this is all based on in Pashas Naso is a situation where the husband has warned his wife not to hang out with his people because he's concerned about the relationships. Ve'shachav ish ota shichvat zera. She does have a relationship with another man. Ve'ne'elam ne'enei isha, but the man doesn't know about it. Nistera, it was done in secret. but she has been defiled. there is no evidence. and she wasn't raped. Rashi says We learned on Daf Beis. We'll have again on Daf Lamed Aleph. The din that if after he warns her, there is one witness that says. I, I know they actually had a relationship, not just that she was hanging out with him. I, I know that they actually had a relationship. Then the sota process doesn't work, even though it's an Eid Echad. So that's part of what we're going to look at today, this difference between Eid Echad and Shnei Edim, but in the laws of, of sota and in the laws of Egla Arufa, that's the where we don't know, who, we find a dead body, we don't know who murdered the person. If there's one witness who says, I know who murdered the person, that's not enough to, to judge the murderer and to... And to punish the murderer, but it is enough to say it's not an egg la rufa. We don't go forward with the egg la rufa process. In the same way, if there's one witness who says, I know that, that she did have a relationship with this other man, that's not enough to judge her as an adulterer, but it's enough, as adulterous and, and, and punish her as such, that isn't enough, but it is enough for the sota process not to start, even though there's only one aid, the, the sota process wouldn't work. Because the sota process only works when it's unknowable, when there's no way you can have any, any knowledge. So, that, so we see that the knowledge of one witness is considered knowledge, even though it's not actionable knowledge, but it is considered knowledge. And therefore Rashi says, Afilu edichad shaman it made laita shotash, then the sota system didn't work. We've got, we need two witnesses that she was alone with another man. But we don't have witnesses as to what happened while they were alone. We only have one witness that says, I was, I was peeping and I could see, I know exactly what happened. It says our Mishnah, These are the cases, if the man is a Kohen and the wife is, becomes a Sota, she can't eat of his truma. How merits may I need? If she admits, she says, yeah, I, I did. I did have a relationship with this man. So now no, the sota system will no longer work. She's had made an admission, so we have some knowledge. Or witnesses come and they say that she was tmea. We, we saw, we know that she was actually defiled. How merit any shota? Or she refuses to drink. Her husband doesn't want her to drink. In any of these cases where the system of sota is not instituted, she is in this suspended situation where she can't eat from his truma. Or that he had relations with her after all of this in the way. The one we're concerned with right now is Witnesses come and say that she is Tamea. So then the Gemara goes on, an amazing Gemara. Rav Amram says in the name of Rav Sheshet, and he brings a proof from the Mishnah, that Sotashi Yeshla Idim Bimdinat Hayam Ena Mayim Bodkimota. 
if there are witnesses far away in another country, overseas, there are witnesses that she actually had relations, but they're not in Bayesdin. So there's no evidence in Bayesdin. That we just know that there are witnesses somewhere in the world who were present and saw exactly what happened. Then, the, then it doesn't work. Then she doesn't have a drink of the salty water. My time at Omakro, ba. If you look at the words in the Pasuk, it says, Ve'ed ein ba, there is no witness. It doesn't say that witnesses didn't come. There is no witness. But if there was a witness, even if the witnesses haven't come to give evidence, then she would not go ahead with the sota. Whereas in this case, there is somebody who knows about it, and therefore the sota wouldn't work. And he proved it from our Mishnah. One of the cases is witnesses come and they say she's been defiled. When did these witnesses come? If the witnesses come before the whole sota thing even takes place, witnesses come to Beit and they say, we saw, we know that she was defiled by another man, then she says, oh no, then she has the din of an adulteress. So that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the case where she drank from the water and nothing happened to her. She passed the test. Then witnesses come and they say, ah, oh, but we know that she was metama. Do we go by the witnesses? Do we go by the miracle? If you say, water doesn't work if there are witnesses, then we will say, so the witnesses come and say, she did commit adultery, but she passed the test. Ah, she passed the test because there were witnesses. You see from here that if there are witnesses, even, if, uh, even though the witnesses haven't yet come to Bayesdin, the test doesn't work. So we invalidate the test because there are witnesses. Right? So, and, and, so you, because you've got two opposite things. The witnesses say she committed adultery. She passes the test. She drinks the salt of water and nothing happens. So who do you believe? The test or the, or the, uh, the witnesses? Says, says Rav Sheshis. Clearly the whole discussion is because we could say the, the test was invalid. Why was the test invalid? Because there were witnesses. You see from here that the mere fact that it is known by somebody somewhere, even though it hasn't yet brought to Bayesdin, makes the test invalid. The whole system of Sota isn't, isn't initiated. It doesn't even start. So we've got the Tosfus here. Mesapka le Rebi. My Rebi asked the, asked the following question. Who's the Rebi? So I've explained to you that the Tosfus on Sota is from the German school of Tosfus, whereas up till now we've mainly learned the French school of, of Tosfus. The French school is from Rashi, the Ri, Rabbeinu Tam. In Soto, it seems that the Tosfus is the German school, which is from Speer, was, was one of the big places, Mainz, Magenza, Worms. That was the area of enormous Jewish knowledge, in, uh, Torah knowledge, during the medieval period. It wasn't far from France, so there was a lot of communication. But they had a different approach in their, in, in their Tosfus. And we'll understand some of the differences between the French approach and the, and the German approach. But the Rebbe here, it seems that the, the Tosfus on Sota was written by a Talmud of Rabbi Yehuda ben Klonimus. The Klonimus family was an incredibly important family in Speer. At the time, the 10th, 11th, 12th century, they, they were there. They came from Italy originally. Very, very authoritative. And when he says Rebbe, he's talking about Rebbe Yehuda ben Klonimus. And he had the doubt. We know that if, before she drinks, if one witness says she was committed adultery, the Sota system won't work. We know, even if it's only one witness. Asks Tosfus, what about if after she's drank, one witness says, I know she committed adultery. Will we treat that like two witnesses? Or will we consider this? No, this is not evidence at all. But Rav Sheshe doma big edim bim ninas hayam. And we can go further. When Rav Sheshe says, even if she's got witnesses overseas who haven't yet come to the Beis Din, the system won't work. Does that work with one witness? If there's one person who knows overseas, will that work? Or do you need two people overseas? And Tosfus goes through the reasoning and comes to the conclusion, further on on We're going to learn further on that Ula, principle of Ula, when the Torah accepts one witnesses, where is that? Two cases, Soto and Egla Arufa. When the Torah accepts Eid Echod, it accepts it with the full power of two A.D. So again, the Torah won't accept Eid Echod to put her to death because she committed adultery. But the Torah does accept Eid Echod, one witness, 
to invalidate the sota process. She's not a sota. A sota is somebody who's in doubt. We don't know what happened. He warned her. She hung out with the person. We don't know what happened there. If one witness does know what happened there, although that's not actionable, she's no longer a sota. She's much worse than a sota. She, she's no longer in that, in that state of safek. The Rambam says, in Hilchot Sata, in Ba'edechad ve'he'id she'hi t'me'a, if one witness comes and says she's t'me'a, after she's drank, ha'reizu te'shev tachat ba'ala. She's drunk and she passed the test. One witness comes and says, but I know what really happened. Who do we believe? The test or the aid? The nafkimina, can she go home with her husband? Can she still live with her husband? Says the Rambam, she can live with her husband because she passed the test. Says Reb Chaim, you see from here that the test works if one witness knows. What did Tosva say? One witness is like two witnesses. If there's one witness in Iceland who knows what happened, the water won't work, the test won't work. That's what Tosva wants to suggest. Reb Chaim proves from the Rambam that the Rambam holds if one witness knows, that already invalidates the test. The test isn't going to work. Reb Chaim then goes into a beautiful analysis, which you can look at if you, if you have the time, explaining the difference between one witness in the case of Sota and one witness in the case of Egla Arufa. And the principle is, he says, with the one witness in the case of Sota, Tosfa says one witness is like two witnesses. It makes a difference. The Torah says one witness works, it works as good as two witnesses. The Rambam doesn't say that. The Rambam says, when one witness comes to Beisdin and gives evidence, then it's like two witnesses. But until one witness comes to Beisdin, it's nothing. However, if two witnesses in Iceland know what happened, then it's not nothing. So let's, let's look at the difference. Tosfa says, it doesn't matter. One or two witnesses in Iceland know that she committed adultery. The waters don't work. The test doesn't work because she's no longer in doubt. Even though we don't know, they haven't come to Beisdin. We, Beisdin, don't know. But it is known. There are people in the world who know the truth. If there are people in the world who know the truth, Soto won't work. What happens if there's one person in the world who knows the truth? Says Tosus, that's still the same, because Ullah says one is like two in this matter. Says the Rambam, the way Reb Chaim understands the Rambam is no. If two people in Iceland know the truth, that's called no. If one person in Iceland knows the truth, that's not yet called no. This is a beautiful piece of, of Rambam and Reb Chaim and, and, and worth spending some time on. But for the purposes of the Matmon, it's important to, certainly as far as the Rambam goes, is to understand the difference between one and two. Can you think of any other case where there's a difference in level of knowledge between if one person knows something or two people know something, where there's, where there's a big enough community? So it's in the laws of Losh and Hora. Right? If, if, if something is, is known by one person and you spread it out, is that known if it's known by two people? The difference between one person and two people is when one person knows something, it's not yet known. Because until the person speaks to somebody else, it's not yet in the world of information. It's in somebody's head. And as long as something's in somebody's head, the Rambam holds that's not yet known. Tosfus holds it, that's known. If it's in one person's head, that's called known. And she's no longer a Soto, she's no longer a Sophic. There's, there, there's a person in the world who knows. The Rambam's view would be, a person in the world who knows is not, know, is not known knowledge. It's in a person's head. But once two people know, that's, fa that's information. That's now known in the world. That's completely different because when two people know, they talk about it. They've talked to each other about it already. Once two people know, it's already it's a, a crowd. It's out there. If you take somebody in your, into your confidence, there's a chance that it stays confidential. If you've taken two people in your confidence, don't treat it as confidential anymore. It's uh, the, the chances are once two people know it's, it's out. That's what we see from here. There's a difference. There's a quality. According to Tosavis, even if one person knows it's out. According to the Rambam, there's a qualitative difference between one person knowing something and more than one person knowing something. Uh, and that's why in the world of, uh, of social media and the digital world, world in which we operate, you've got to assume that anything you've written digitally is out. You, you can never assume, no matter how many confidentials you write on it and, and how carefully you, you file it somewhere, somewhere away, once something is knowable, once it's accessible, and if two people know something, says the Rambam, it's accessible. Two people know something, there's, it's out there. According to Tertius, even if one person knows it, it's accessible. Once information is accessible, it's public knowledge. 
You've got to assume that it's, that it's public knowledge. And that's something that people are finding difficult. Those people who deal with it every day are, are, are adjusting to it. But the ordinary person is finding it difficult to understand that if you want to communicate something confidential, there's only one way to do it now. And that's to make an appointment with the person and see the person outdoors like Yaakov did with Rochel and Leah, take them out into the field because you don't even know in a room what, what microphones are there and what computers are on and what cameras are on, you don't know. You've got to take the person out. If you want it to really be confidential, you've got to take the person out and it can only be one person. If you've taken two people out into the field and you've taken two people, it's already, it's already public knowledge. <laughs>